Hello, Jeff Zwerink here. Welcome back to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Dr. Fuzz Rana, and we are going to investigate cave art and whether that points to a creator or not. Fuzz, good to have you back on the show. Jeff, thanks for having me. So cave art, uh, you know, I, I, why don't you give us a little bit of background on cave art? What, what do we know? What have we found? What's significant about it? And then we'll kind of get into the, the theological implications in a bit. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, when we go back into the archaeological record uh, in Europe, uh, primarily we see the, these incredible murals on the cave walls uh, in France and in Germany and Spain. And so, so when you say incredible murals, I'm thinking like Sistine Chapel type stuff. Is it that level of quality or, or kind of give us a little picture? Well, uh, in, in some respects, it is that level of quality. You know, the, the, the level of sophistication of the art is really rather significant. I mean, granted, it's depicting animals that primarily that would have been in the world at that time. But the, the detail in, in these depictions and the three-dimensional effects mm. are, are rather sophisticated. And so the art is stylistically distinct maybe from what you see in the Sistine Chapel, but qualitatively the art is, is, is the same. And so this is a, a mystery in terms of when does art appear and who is responsible for producing this art, you know, and, and uh, can you use this art as a way to demonstrate that there's something special and unique about human beings as scripture teaches. So I know you've written a, uh, a more recent article about a discovery of uh, some cave art. Why don't you give us some of the details? Where is it? When did it happen? What's, what's depicted? And then we'll kind of get into the implications afterwards. Yeah, sure. Well, you know, most of the cave art that, that people think of, again, is the cave art found in Europe. But in recent years, archaeologists are discovering a number of uh, uh, cave art specimens uh, in Southeast Asia. And the, the oldest dated cave art now, whether it's Asia or in Europe, actually is on uh, the island of Sulawesi, which is part of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And this particular art dates older than 45,000 years in age. And, and this is a, a depiction of uh, warty pigs that would have been endemic to the, to the island. But uh, the, the pigs. Well, well that, the, so the, the the dating seems important there because presumably, you know, if if humans originated in Africa and then migrated across, this is the fact that you're getting forty five thousand years over in uh, Indonesia means this had to have been. Th this is a fair fair bit of time after humans have migrated, is is what I'm getting at. Yes, and it and the art is actually older than what we see in Europe, hmm. and, and so that means that uh, instead of humans migrating, and then in Europe, something triggers, you know, a, a, a cultural revolution in humans. What we see is that this cave art must have already been, uh, or the capability to make mm -hmm. cave art must have already been present in humans before they even began to migrate around the world. Because the, the art is not only older in Asia, but it's qualitatively very similar to the art that we see in Europe. So again, it suggests that this was a uh, a, a, a skill set that, and a capability that these humans carried with them, and, and so that means it must have also existed prior to migrating around the world. Oh, fascinating. So I, I know in your article you talk about these things called therianthropes. Uh, what are those? And uh, well, tell us what those are first. Yeah. Well, in in uh, another uh, cave in Sulawesi was the discovery of a mural of it looked like a hunting scene. But instead of the hunters being humans, they were these uh, hybrids between humans and animals, mm. uh, therianthropes. And, and, uh, and, and this is presumably indicating that the, the people that produced this art had a sense of an imaginary world, had a sense of the supernatural. So not only you know, is it reflecting an ability to represent the world symbolically and maybe to tell stories in the art through the use of symbols, but it's also, again, indicating a sense of a, a reality beyond the physical material world. So, so I find that fascinating, because if, if given the dating of things and what's going on there, you know, as you, you know, humanity is somewhere in the 50 to 100, or you know, 100, 150,000 year range. We're talking by 45,000 years in Indonesia, you're getting this 
complex art that also has this image or you know picture of the supernatural that would that seems to argue that from its earliest foundations humans seem to have this built into them if you will and right. not something that kind of developed over time right and you even are seeing evidence for symbolic expression uh in in uh, cave uh, in the caves found for example in south africa that date you know, in the 70 to 80,000 year range where there's evidence for abstract uh, depictions in artifacts in caves in South Africa. So this is all indicating that when humans appeared on the scene, uh, shortly after we appeared on the scene or at that time, we have this ability to produce art, which means we have an ability to think about the world and represent the world symbolically and to tell stories with those symbols. So, so we work at, an, you know, Reasons to Believe looks at how science and the Christian faith work together. What are the theological implications? I mean, th this seems to be important from an anthropology perspective, but it also seems to weigh in on the science faith discussion as well. Yeah, well, um, you know, to me, I view our capacity to create art uh, uh, and our capacity to express ourselves symbolically as a manifestation of the image of God. And so you could look at the cave art as being a proxy for when mm. did the image of God appear and with whom possesses that, that image of God quality. And collectively, the data indicates that that quality and capability appear when human beings appear on the scene. And it's hard to argue that any other creature that has ever lived has those capabilities, including creatures like Neanderthals. And so this cave art and the capacity to to produce cave art, I think, sets us apart as human beings, as scripture teaches, but also could be viewed as being evidence for the image of God uh, that's consistent with what we'd expect if the biblical account is true. Well, thanks, Fuzz. I really appreciate your comments. You know, when we look at scripture, one of the things that sets human apart from all of the rest of creation is that we are uniquely made in God's image. That means that we have the capacity to worship and know God, uh, awareness of who we are and our place in creation. And as Fuzz is describing in this uh, fascinating find, we see evidence of that dating back to the earliest periods of humanity, which is exactly what we would expect if the Bible gives us an accurate description of how the world works. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Fuzz's blog on this. Ancient cave art provides evidence for the image of God. It will help you understand the cave art and what it has to say, but also how you can use it to share the gospel with those God brings across your path.